field trims are something that uh, I think people find very confusing. And I think there's a really easy way to kind of show exactly what's going on and visually in a way that makes sense to a lot of people. Now, this was shown to me by somebody else. Um, and I think it's, like I said, a really great way to kind of illustrate exactly what our fuel trims are doing. Okay, so fuel trims. What are we doing with our fuel trims? So basically, our fuel trims uh, is the ability for the PCM to adjust fuel metering based on feedback from the auction sensor. So our auction sensor is giving an input to our PCM. The PCM is then able to adjust accordingly using our fuel trims. Okay. Now, in this image, we have a balancing beam with two balls. The small blue ball is what we're going to call our short-term fuel trim. And the large red ball is our long-term fuel trim. Now, our PCM is trying to keep our little balancing act perfectly balanced. And if it's perfectly balanced, then that gives us our stoichiometric ratio of 14.7 to 1. Okay, so that's 14.7 parts of air to one part of fuel. And that is basically what is going to give us our optimum operating parameters. Okay, so in a perfect world, if we are able to balance this and, and basically achieve our 14.7 to 1 ratio, then everything is A-OK. -okay. All right, now looking at a auction sensor, and by the way, here I'll explain this a little bit more. So what I mean by this is one side of this balancing beam would be considered the engine going lean, for example, 20 to 1. And then the other side of the balancing beam would be the um, ratio going rich, for example, 10 to 1. So look at this balance beam. If it's perfectly balanced, it's not too lean, it's not too rich, it's perfectly in the center, which is our 14.7 to 1 ratio. Okay. Now looking at an oxygen sensor reading, the oxygen sensor should be giving us a cycling reading. Okay, so it's not lean, it's not rich, it's just cycling back and forth like normal. Now, unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world and things happen, such as if the engine starts to run lean. So the engine starts to run lean. For example, um, let's say 15 to 1 ratio or 16 to 1 ratio. So it's starting to go a little lean. Then what's going to happen is our little balance beam is going to become off balance. All right, the engine is going to go too far lean and that's not good. We want this balance bar to be perfectly level. So right now we're too lean. We're not 14.7 to 1. All right, so what do we do? Well, our PCM is going to use what we call our short-term fuel trim, which is sometimes written as short-term fuel trim, to try to correct for it. So our little ball here, our little short-term uh, field trim ball is going to start rolling out and starting to enrich in the actual mixture. So it's going to actually add fuel. And our short-term field trim is actually going to start displaying a reading on our PIS list. And for example, it might start to read 8%. So that's a positive 8%. So what that means is that we're adding 8% more fuel. All right, so the vehicle is lean, the engine's lean. The engine knows this because we have an oxygen sensor. The oxygen sensor should have been cycling, and for some reason, all of a sudden, so maybe it was cycling, and then something's happened, and the engine's gone lean, all right? So the engine's now lean, the ECM knows this, and it starts to control the fuel trims to try to correct for it. So our fuel trim starts moving out, it's enriching, okay, it's adding fuel to try to balance this thing out. So looking at our actual PIDs list, our short-term fuel trim will start to come up. All right, so it starts to come up. It saw that it started to go lean, so it starts to increase the actual fuel trim. All right, so it's going in the positive side. It's adding fuel. So what happens then? is our little small short-term fuel trim ball starts rolling out, starts adding fuel, adding fuel, adding fuel, and it does this until the point that our, we are back to being balanced. So we were lean, okay? Our short-term fuel trim, oh, actually I should have started up here, was positive, and what happens is, is something's happened where 
oh, we start to get our normal readings from our O2 sensor again. So the short term field trim starts to come back down to zero. And our short term field trim is now back into the center around 0%. Now, the whole thing about our short-term field trims is that it's constantly moving, all right? That's what these arrows are supposed to represent. Our short-term field trim is constantly going rich, constantly going lean, all right? It's constantly going positive, negative, positive, negative during driving because things change, things happen. You're accelerating up a hill and then all of a sudden decelerating down a hill. Well, the field trims are going to need to adapt to those different driving conditions. So our short-term field trim is going to be cycling back and forth a little bit, which is totally normal. I would say seeing your short-term field trims during a drive cycle going positive and negative 10% is normal, okay? So you're driving down the road, you're looking at your short-term field trims, seeing it cycle moving from positive to negative a little bit while you're driving, that's going to be normal, all right? So that is normal operation of our short-term field trim. Now, we need to talk a little bit about the long-term though, right? So the short-term is doing quick little adjustments it's engine goes lean. Oh, the short term field trim goes uh, enriches by, by adding a little bit of fuel, balances back out, and then it goes back to cycling back and forth. Maybe the engine goes a little rich. Short term field trim moves lean to try to balance it out again. All right, so that short term field trim is running back and forth all the time. Now, long term field trim comes into play when we have, generally, is when we have an issue. So let's say the engine now is running very rich for some reason. Uh, maybe it's a fuel injection system that has a return um, using a or a return type fuel system using a vacuum regulator. Vacuum regulator is leaking and it's just sucking raw fuel into the engine. Well, our oxygen sensor is going to show that it's really rich. Okay, it's really rich. It's above 450 millivolts. It's close to 1,000 millivolts. All right. So what's going to happen is the short term fuel trim initially is going to come shooting out. And it's going to come out and it's going to go um, it's going to go negative and it's going to sit there and it's going to come out and out and out and out very quickly until it's trying to balance out. Now, once that short term field trim crosses a point, let's say uh, plus or minus 8%. So once it passes that minus 8%, okay, that's a negative 8%. The short-term field trim is basically yelling back to the PCM, I'm trying to make a correction, it's not working, right? I'm only doing so much, I'm really having to come out far, and it's basically, we're, we're really rich, we need some help here. It's not just a simple little quick adjustment for it to balance out. Short-term field trim's moved out, we're still very rich. So what happens is the long-term field trim starts rolling out to help, right? So the long-term field trim starts coming out, and it is now going to sit there and start to help balance this beam out again. So the short term field trim is way out here. Long term field trim is saying, all right, well, obviously you're struggling here. I'm going to start slowly working my way out to give you a hand until we start to balance this whole thing out. So short term field trim has gone, say, negative 20%, negative 15% very quickly okay very very quickly it jumps to that amount because it's really fast acting but because it's moved so far out trying to balance this out and it hasn't been able to do so the long term starts to move out as well so the ECM basically is able to notice there's a big issue here we need the big guns out to start correcting for it now eventually hopefully it does correct for it but if you look here we have an issue, right? I've already said we've got a fuel leak into the intake. It's just sucking raw fuel in. Fuel trims aren't going to fix that. They're just going to correct for it. So at this point, the short-term fuel trim, eventually, once this balances back out, the long-term will actually stay out. All right? There's a big issue. The long-term is going to stay out. And let's say it's out there at negative 15%. It is removing 15% of the fuel to make up for that fuel leak. The long or the, the short term though is able to move back to the zero point and doing its small corrections. So maybe it's gone positive, maybe it goes negative a little bit or whatever during your normal drive cycle. But the long term stays at that negative 15% because it's 
trying to correct for a actual physical fault, a major fault. Okay, so basically, let's just go over this again. There's a major issue, major rich issue. We have a fuel leak that long term has had to move all the way out here to help balance it out and it's staying out there. The long term fuel trim is not fast acting, but it makes a big difference and it's going to remain out you know, at negative 15 or positive 15 or whatever to try to correct for it. The short term fuel trim will eventually return close to zero because it's making our quick adjustments for our normal driving situation. So it's very common to look at your fuel trims. If say you have a vacuum leak, okay, you're trying to figure out what's going on with your engine, it's set a coding and there's an actual physical vacuum leak, all right? Your short term fuel trim may read something like, I don't know, positive 4%. And then your long term fuel trim is gonna read maybe let's say positive 18%. Okay, so that means it's adding 18% more fuel for the long term. The short term is closer to zero, right? That could be negative 4%. It's closer to zero because it's making it small little corrections for normal operation or normal driving. The long term is going to stay much higher because it's correcting for a vacuum leak. Now, if it was a fuel leak or something like that, then maybe it would read negative 18% and the short term will be cycling, but positive and negative close to zero. Okay, so that is like the basic gist of what's going on with our fuel trims. Now remember, our short-term fuel trim, okay, short-term is using our O2 sensor. Okay, so we have our O2 sensor being used, and that is what the short-term fuel trim is using to make its corrections. Now the long-term fuel trim, okay, what that's using in order to make its adjustments is actually what the short-term fuel trim is doing, right? O2 sensor is an input to the ECM. The ECM makes a very quick adjustment using the short-term fuel trim, but the ECM is monitoring what the short-term fuel trim is doing and then starts to adjust the long-term fuel trim in order to make any bigger changes that are required. Okay, so I really hope this video kind of helped explain a little bit of what about fuel trims, what they're doing and the purpose of them. Um, there's lots of videos showing, you know, at data and stuff like that on how to read it and how to diagnose it, right? What a negative percentage would mean on the long term, what a positive would. And the big thing is just realize is if you've got a vehicle and you're looking at your fuel trims, focus on your long term for diagnosis of large issues such as vacuum leaks, which would cause a positive percentage because remember positive is adding fuel or things like uh, inadvertent fuel being added, so that would be a negative. Or you could also use your fuel trim data for looking at or diagnosing bad auction sensors or wideband sensors, um, things like that, okay? So hopefully this video helped. Um, if you have any comments or anything like that that hopefully are helpful to other people, please leave them below and I'm sure others would really appreciate it.